I can't put Monster Hunter Rise down. It's been one of those games that I've been really addicted to, and that hasn't happened for a couple of years. And I haven't been this addicted to a game since Breath of the Wild. After a week or so of hunting, I came to the conclusion that I absolutely love this game. I've always liked Monster Hunter anyway, but this one's this one's different. Hello everybody, my name is Gary from Nintendo Village and in this video we're obviously going to be talking about Monster Hunter Rise. It's really, really something special. Uh, it's quickly becoming my second favourite game on the Switch, just behind Breath of the Wild. And that's a great thing, right? Also, excuse the room, we're going through a bit of decorating, but that's got nothing to do with Monster Hunter Rise. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. Kamira Village was attacked by a rampage of monsters 50 years ago. You, as in Lulu Certified Hunter, are warned that there are signs of another impending rampage. So, you and the other villagers set out to prepare for the incoming onslaught. After creating your character using a very, very in-depth character creator, you were thrown straight into the game and shown what to do by a ton of pop-up tutorials. Honestly, there are a lot of pop-up tutorials in this game and they are quite daunting at times, but trust me, hang in there it's not as complicated as it makes out. I remember struggling with my first Monster Hunter on the Wii. The difference is this time is there is a lot of people online who can show you the ropes, a lot of people in communities, and generally the game does do a better job of showing you the controls. So all these dialogue boxes kind of seem like a bit of a waste at times, but they're always there in the menus afterwards in case you get stuck or forget something. So you can always see them whenever you want. But regardless of how the game rolls out its tutorials, getting stuck into the first mission is what you really want to do. And it's apparent that things have drastically changed if you're used to the other Monster Hunter games. Movement is so much better, and gliding around the map on the back of your dog-like buddy called a Palamute is an absolute treat in itself. Movement is so fluid and smooth, and it's projected further by the newly included Wirebug. The Wirebug is a kind of Monster Hunter version of the Hookshot, it lets you shoot a grapple into the air, which then in turn lets you run up walls. So you can scale hills, cliffs, and even run sideways around walls. This is super important because movement has never been a Monster Hunter's strong point, but I think they've actually nailed it this time. In fact, it's better than most games now. One of the main draws of the Monster Hunter series is its big collection of weapons, and Monster Hunter Rise is now different. Each weapon class feels vastly different from the next and learning the way that your chosen weapon works is the key to success and it's something that personally I love. I've been switching between the Sword of Shield and the Light Bowgun in this game. I, I do plan on using everything else, but there's so much in this game that you kind of have to pick a side and stick with it for a while. The Sword of Shield is a trusty old adventure set that lets you get up close and personal with the monsters. This is actually the starting point I would recommend for anybody who's new to the Monster Hunter series as it's one of the only weapons that actually lets you block, which is something that's very handy in this game because some of these monsters can be pretty fast. But then again, if you like your shooters, you've always got something like the Light Bowgun. I mean, the Light Bowgun does vary depending on which one that you choose to own and how you upgrade it, but it basically turns Monster Hunter into a bit of a shooter. And then there's stuff like the bow. Everyone knows what a bow's like. It's a little bit different in this game, but it's a bow. And then you've also got things like the Great Sword, which is this giant, colossal, huge sword which is slow to swing. And then you've got stuff like the Jewel Blades, which as the name suggests, is a pair of blades. And these are basically crazy. <laughs> they let you tear away at the monsters with rapid speed. The weapon variety in Monster Hunter has always been its strong point, and the game actually gives you a set of every single weapon in your chest at the start of the game, so you can try them all out and see which one suits you. Most of the missions in Monster Hunter sees you, well, hunting monsters. Most are like big dinosaur or dragon-like creatures that can take an absolute battering before they go down. The key to success here is learning the monster, learning the way that it attacks, learning its general behaviour, and just making sure that you manage to avoid those attacks when it does them, otherwise you'll be sent flying with a huge dent in your health bar. The monsters in this game are incredible and they feel so much more alive. The way that they travel around the seamless maps and interact and fight with each other is incredible. You can even bump into monsters sleeping or having a snack from time to time too. 
Honestly, it's like the world of Monster Hunter is actually lived in by these creatures. They do things that are unique to each other, and they just generally have these behaviours which other monsters won't have. If you're a fan of well-crafted boss fights, then Monster Hunter is a game that is basically all that. And it always has been. But the incredible design and variety of the monsters at hand here is nothing short of impressive. It's so satisfying when you break off a part of a monster's wing, or slash a monster's tail off. And it's rewarding when you see a monster limping away or drooling slowly as it's losing a fight against you and your team. And if the monster is about to do a big attack, you'll hear your hunter shouting, I have a grip to control of that tight in ages when you know that that monster is going to unleash a big attack against you and you need to desperately dodge out of the way. And once a monster is defeated, it's time to carve it up for materials. You collect these with other stuff that you collected from around the map to make new armour and new weapons. This in turn lets you take on bigger and harder monsters. There's no levelling up system as such. You get ranked on how many monsters you've killed, but the way that you improve in this game is by improving your armour and improving your weaponry. So let's talk about that because collecting all this stuff, there is a lot in Monster Hunter. There is lots and lots of different things that you can pick up. And it's always been a bit of a pain in the past, but things have changed again. Luckily there's been a bunch of quality and life improvements on Monster Hunter Rise. They've taken the sting out of sorting through your inventories. When you collect materials, the games will auto-craft certain ones, so that saves you a lot of hassle. Items can be auto-sorted, which is also great, and you have the option to refine your search down if you're looking for a certain material. Armors in this game are sorted by type instead of being randomly dumped in a box for you to hunt down and find yourself. And weapons have more of a skill tree like system which makes it easier to find which one you want to upgrade to next. It's these kind of improvements that are the stuff that makes Monster Hunter Rise so great. And while the menus ain't perfect, they're a damn sight better than they have been in previous games. You see what Monster Hunter Rise has done has taken all those boring things about MMOs and stuff that you don't really want to do like gathering materials and sped the whole thing up. So now you're spending less time going through menus and more time actually just facing monsters. So now you don't have to keep spamming the A button every time you find a harvesting spot or a mining point on the map. You press a button once and it collects everything from that pile and some of them even let you do it while just running past. Auto crafting, auto sorting, it's all done for you but the biggest, biggest improvement to Monster Hunter is it's online. Playing Monster Hunter online has always been a treat. Seriously, since the Wii version they've nailed the online, it's always been good and it's always been solid. But Monster Hunter Rise has taken, again, some of the most boring parts of online play and improved upon them vastly. Unlike most games, you don't need to sit around for a lobby to fill up before going on a quest. Now you can open a room and go straight into hunting a monster on your own. And then when people come into your lobby, they can then join that quest meaning that you don't have to wait around, wait for a full team before you can head off. People can also jump in and jump out whenever they want, and the beauty of this is that the monsters scale in difficulty depending on how many people are in that room to fight him in the first place. So if everybody leaves, you're not stuck with a monster that's too overpowering. It gets a little bit easier, so you can manage it on your own. So far, it's been the most smooth and fluent online game on the Nintendo Switch so far. Granted, it doesn't have voice chat, which would have been really, really, really nice, but it does have some text-based shoutouts and stuff like that that are customizable. So there is the options of talking to your fellow monster hunters, but it has its limitations. And so it's apparent that I'm really enjoying this game and I really love it, but like every game, it does have a few little niggles here and there. And while Capcom has done a fantastic job of sorting out the menus and stuff like that to try and make the game faster, They've somehow made it more complicated by adding more controls. Yes, Monster Hunter has always been a bit fiddly with its controls. People new to the series always struggle a little bit. I remember struggling as well when I first played the series. But they've somehow managed to add even more buttons which could be more daunting to newer players. And where the tutorial does do a good job of letting you know how the game is played, 
When you actually go into the game though, it can be a little bit daunting to look at the interface and just think, wow, there are so many things going on. And one thing I found myself doing is when things got a little bit too heated, I would mix up the back button so I'd end up shooting a wire bug instead of locking onto a monster and so on and so forth. One of the reasons for this is the buttons for that change depending on whether you're using Sword and Shield or something like the Bowgun. Also in the menus there are a lot of things to help veteran players out and to streamline that experience overall, but for new players it means there's even more menus and more things to look at and more little sub menus that keep popping up. Like I say, you do eventually get used to these, they are just daunting at first, but still, there is a lot, a lot of menus in this game. I don't know though, these are really minor niggles. Maybe it's just me for the most part, maybe I'm the big dum dum. I honestly love this game and it's going to be a fight to knock it off my number one spot for Game of the Year 2021. Honestly, I love, love this game. I love the combat, the story, the world, the customizations, the online. There's just plenty in this game to love. And it's going to get bigger because there are free DLC packs coming soon. Have you picked up Monster Hunter? Are you playing it like I am and absolutely loving it? Are you a little overwhelmed by the game and what do you think of it generally? Let me know in the comments down below. So thank you very much for watching the video. Please consider subscribing and head over to the NintendoVillage.com if you like all sorts of news, reviews and podcasts and all that good stuff. And I'll catch you next week for another video.